Hi everyone, uh, Matt Morris here in Waterloo, Ontario, and today we are going to make love using one five gallon bucket, which I'll throw, cast to the side for now, and one plastic knife, because this is the safe tool I've been promoting for those new to sculpt snow sculpting. So let's begin. To start with, I'm gonna make little tiny strokes into the snow, because what we need here is a flat surface to carve the word love. So I'm gonna start lightly and then go deeper and deeper until I can chop off this corner. This will all make sense in a moment. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna start with some light strokes and then cut down and then line it up beautifully with the line I've made on the far side and then light strokes going deeper and deeper until I can break off this corner. And I'm holding the knife with my finger on top which gives me good control and good power. Now I can cut down this side and then pop it off. Woo, there's some drama, some drama in snow. And now I can get easier access to the center, but I'm not gonna cut right to the line. I'll cut a little far back and then stroke that through. Same on this side. And then that pops off. Big moment in snow sculpting right there, drama. Now I'm gonna hold the knife as long as I can and continue with my short, or not short, but my uh, my cuts into the snow that are not deep. And then I'll come to the other side, do the same thing. Oh, there's some, the light, the sunshine is so beautiful today. And it's giving me some good contrast to see what I need to do. Okay, we're close. Now I'm gonna start shaving it to that line. Okay, so we're just trying to get a flat surface here. And then at some point I can hold the top gently and use my hand to, I'll say, sand off the front. This will help make it a nice, nice flat surface. Okay, now the same thing for the other side. And I'm gonna go fairly thick. I'm gonna go, say, maybe three or four inches. I can always come in thinner later, but let's keep it nice and thick. And again, I'll make some gentle cuts, then deeper and deeper. And then at some point, we're gonna cut off that corner. Here it comes. Woohoo! Same thing for the other side. And we're only going to pick one side, of course, for the carving, because you're only, only going to view this from the front. So in a moment, you can see the light shining through. Uh, in a moment, we'll pick which side is the best. There'll be a winner. And down we go. You know, I chose to carve this because, you know, we're trying to get through this pandemic and Maybe what we need is a little more love. So, we're getting close. This snow was pounded into the pail using just my mittens. I didn't have a pounder, and I let it center for a long time. I left this, actually, this one's been sitting around for a couple of days now. And that makes the carving process a lot easier because the snow is just a beautiful medium. So, there we have our two sides. Now we're gonna pick, we'll use the sunshine to help us pick which is the better side. This is the better side for sure. So now we have to carve L-O-V-E. And let's decide on some quadrants here. So that's about quarters, I think. And that will help us figure out where the letters will go. All right, so L is here. Let's trace that on. And I'm gonna leave the letters very thick at this point because I can always make them thinner later. So that's about right. Then we've got the O here, and I'll cu cut out some triangles out of the corner to make it closer to the O, L-O-V. Obviously you need a little V here, and this will eventually get cut off to make it look more like a V. I'll leave the letters fat for now, and a big chunk on the bottom. I'm not going to a point on the bottom. I'm just tracing these out, and then for the E, I'm just gonna go with a couple lines here because this will be the trickiest part of the entire thing. All right, let's start at the top. Little short strokes, and I'm not chopping, I'm drawing the knife. It's sort of a sawing motion. And then the snow is popping out. I'm staying away from the actual edge that I need. But in I go, and I'm going down to that line that I had made. Ooh, there's some dirt in my snow. Now, if I had put a tarp down when I was collecting this snow, I would have had pristine snow. 
digging in like this on the bottom. Oh, it's rocking. So I'll put my hand on top to stabilize. Again, the sawing motions. Um, but yeah, this snow was created with just a dusting of snow we had a couple nights ago. And I think I shoveled this off my driveway. Um, but it's pretty nice. Sintering all that time, all those snowflakes bonded together into one to create this beautiful carving medium called snow and it's free and although there's issues with you know global warming and all the end all the all the rest there is still snow falling at this point and i'm loving it and whatever falls is going to be free and it creates all these opportunities for free fun outside we've got a sunny day here in waterloo and it's just gorgeous all right, we're getting near the bottom of this one. Now, on the back side, here's the back side. I got this rotisserie. It makes it a lot easier for demo. You can go larger on the back side because it's the front that defines the edge. And we'll see later probably some examples of where if it's too closed at the back, your eye will catch that. So you can, you know, make this larger at the back to allow the front to define the edge. So there you can see, almost see, because there's nothing at the back, it's a nice, nice edge. Now, I think I took out a little bit too much on the back, just to make a point, but okay, for educational purposes, that works. Maybe I went a little overboard. Cleaning up the corners really helps to define things. Yeah, so now we go into the center. I'm gonna start drilling out this, the middle of the O. There's various techniques you can use. You can see that I'm kind of cranking the knife in. I'll hold it long again, because I want to get right through to the far side. I think I'm, oh, I'm through. There you go. I'll work from behind, because you can, you'll be able to see, and you'll see what I'm doing as well. So again, I'll go a little bigger on the back side. A little bigger on the back side. That's my new line. Get my eye down so I can see you right through. Maybe you can see me there. And that allows me to make sure that my cut lines are level and therefore proper. How's that? Not bad. We'll definitely clean it out some more, but for now I'm okay. Now, short drawing motions on the corners. I'm going to get that front corner done. Now, I've been, I said triangle, but obviously we need to round that. So we'll get the triangle going. And you'll notice I'm not going right to the back because, oh, did you see that fly off? If you push at the back, you could knock off a whole piece. Now for this carving, that's not so critical because we're viewing it from the front. But you want to get in the habit of not pushing in a way or carving in a way that will knock off the weak point. So now I'll go to the back and I'll come in from the back, which will be a much safer carve. Rounding off the top. There, there's a good motion. I'm filling this void again. Oh well, we can fix that. Down into this corner here, get my eye down level so I can see what that actual angle will be. There we go. If I get my eye level with it, that will help me get it right. You'll notice I blow out a lot of the snow. It's a great way to clean out a void, but make sure you don't hyperventilate. That's when you are huffing and puffing too much. Okay, we're getting there. Now, this is, I think, one of the smaller... Oh, my knife just flipped into the O there. We'll fix that later. I'm into the smallest triangle here. Now, it's rocking, so I'll gently put my hand on top, and I'll do a drilling motion, and I'm drawing out the snow with my knife. I think I'm through. And now I'm going to define this corner with the sawtooth. And I'll put the sawtooth up, draw it into this corner, which is very delicate. Get my eye down level with it so I can see what's going on. There we go, up into that corner. And then I'll change my sawtooth to pushing to the right now to get this corner. I'll come down from on top. I'll lift out some of the snow, or blow, <laughs> blow it out, there we go, <laughs> man I'm getting warm, <laughs> almost want to take off my coat, 
but my microphone's in my coat, so I can't do that. I think the hat's coming off in a minute. Which brings up the topic of what to wear when you're doing this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to carve this V while I talk. I'll drill it out. Um, when you're building the, uh, the snow uh, into the forms and pounding it, that's hard work. And I could be wearing way fewer layers than I have on right now, but when you start to carve, you need to put on every layer you can usually. Because right now, this morning, it was minus 6 Celsius here in Canada. And uh, when you're standing around, you can get cold. And as soon as you get cold, it's no longer fun. So better to be warmer and then have to peel layers off, which I think my hat's coming off in a moment. So the process is, you know, dress, dress in a good way to get out there and build the form or build the uh, pails full of snow. And then go in, warm up because you have to come in because it has to center for quite a while. And then later when you go to carve, that's when you really dress warmly. I think I'm through. I think I'm through enough that I can go to the back and clean out that corner, making the back side a little bit bigger than the front, so the front defines the edge. Okay, clean off some of my excess here. Okay, yeah, we need more in that V, otherwise it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, undefined. So I do need to take off a little more at the back end. How's that coming? Okay, so, now we're going to do this bottom part. Watch how fast the shape defines itself as we take off a big chunk. In carving, there's a lot of detail work sometimes, but then sometimes, boom, you take off a big chunk and it starts to, you start to see what the final product might look like. Okay, we're cutting the bottom of the V here and I'm approaching the edge of the shape. I started in the middle and I get my head down so I can see what angle I need. So could you try this where you live? Sure you could. Get yourself a five gallon pail. Oh, blew it in my face. If you can't get a pail, talk to uh, talk to a restaurant. I talked to Nat at Nick and Nat's and they own some restaurants around where I live. And uh, I'm sure many restaurants would be more than happy to give you a pail. Now most restaurants I find use square pails. And I noticed, I realized, I did a test recently and realized that yes, a square pail will release the snow. Because normally you lift and twist to get the pail off. You can't do the twist with a square pail. But I think it's a go. I think if you get a square pail, if that's all you have, then that is a great way to go. And with this kind of shape, square might be a great place to start. All right, what's next? We know we have to do the hard part on the right. But this V needs a little more. This whole V is in trouble. Well, not in trouble. It just needs to be uh, fixed or improved, <laughs> developed. And how should we do this? What do you think? I think my V, I need more of a V. There you go. And I'm going to bring it down to a, more of a point. This point here, level across, should be where this V comes up to. Yeah, so I think that's going to help. Hope my angles are right for you. I will leave a little bit at the bottom, even if it's unnatural, because I do need some support. All right, time for the E, the most fragile part of the build. <sighs> yeah, but this V is still bothering me. So I'm gonna make the V bigger at the back so that the front can define the shape. Have I said that a few times? I like to repeat myself. Okay, in advertising, what is it, the seven times rule? You got to get a message out there seven times for someone to understand. Alrighty. Okay, I think we're ready to go. We could make those a little smoother. Take a little off the top. A little off the top. Isn't that what a barber said to me one time? Not that I have much on my top anymore. Okay, it's time. I'm procrastinating. Let's get to the E. For the E, I'm going to draw my knife in. Strokes right down the middle. Then I slowly go towards the edge of the shape that I need. Being careful not to draw the knife into the beefy part of the E. So I'll go a little more straight in. And I'll lift out the snow with my knife. 
and this is uh, this is the dangerous part of the bottom one. This one down here is going to be more dangerous because I'm leaving that middle stick, and that's that's where the quality of the center will play a role. Now I'm going to come down and make sure that I'm coming in level. snow and you know what I think I've just discovered that that's the way to do this just come right in like this <sighs> yes this might be a new technique for me oh I'm nervous about that middle section I can't bump it I'll try my old way yeah okay I'm still coming in but I think that's a winner being very careful not to come into the part that I want clean. Now I'm going to look at it, see what's next, lift out some more. I'll be cool when the light shines through here. Love. Robert Indiana, apparently he passed away in 2018 and he's got uh, his love statue in New York City and I think there's one in Philadelphia and then he also made one that had the letters H-O-P-E I think he donated that to the, or the proceeds of that, to the Obama campaign. But regardless of your political affiliation, I think that this is a appropriate message for anyone. Okay, now see how the back, I need to take down the back a little more to help the front to find the edge. Just a little bit. Yeah, my V's a little crooked, isn't it? Can I take a little off the side? <sighs> now, what's next? It's always what's next. Well, a couple ideas. I'm going to cut a little bit bigger V to define those letters. I think that might help it pop. <sighs> Getting some contrast is always key. I can even come on the side because there might be some side viewing of the letters. There's already definition there. My V could be a little bigger and more defined. There's a few rough edges there. Tooth up to go into that edge. Draw it out, lift it out and pull. And, oh wow, my V's falling over a little bit. Ah, uh, but that's okay. The message is the same. There's lots of different kinds of love. Okay, tooth up. And this one is not quite far enough in. Okay, now at this point, to help get to end of job, as I take out this little piece of dirt, how'd that get in there? Okay, if I can take a little bit off the front, as I take off my hat, because I'm way too hot. <laughs> if I can take a little bit off the, hot, the front, holding my knife very long and very gently take a little off the front. I think that'll clean things up and give me the look I'm after. I'll use the sun. Can you see that? I'm going to turn that so you can see it better. Okay, maybe like that will work for you. Okay. Oh, we have two love now. <laughs> okay, here I go. I'm going to use the sun to help understand where my high points are or where my non-consistent parts are. I'm pushing in here. There we go. And I think off the right, I've still got a curve from that initial shape. Oh, do not push down here. That would be disastrous. So I'm gonna come in from this corner to flatten that up. And then the bottom I can push down because I got the base there. Yes, so at each level you're des deciding what's next. What can I improve? I think we're almost there. This is a little thick, isn't it? Has that been bothering you for some time? Let's take that down a little bit, cut into the corner, lift it out. And a little bit off, uh, clean out this edge here. Clean off the bottom. <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah. Now I just need the sunshine to come through. But let's give it a final rotation. Oh, not quite, not quite. I could, I could continue with this for another hour if I wanted to, and some of you will want to. Good for you. But I want to stop this video because you know you don't want to watch my video all day long. You want to get out there yourself. And step one, next action would be to get some snow into a bucket and pound it in, even with your mitt. Now, if you're watching this video, you might be on my website, but if you did it, if you watch this on YouTube, you could go to my website, type Snowbank Productions into your search engine, and it'll give you all kinds of tips on how to be successful with snow. But today, and through this pandemic, it's all about love. So I wish you all good health and uh, success in whatever you attempt. But if you're out there doing a love sculpture, I think that would be a great thing. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.